we should go back yeah. in 2018 just to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just that's why I love having the timing. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 why Jay likes having his blog, which is it is really cool to see. You know, you can see Jay's thoughts going back the last couple years, and and I mean, uh, like you can you can get the feeling of emotion, but you can also see that he's very disciplined and you know like rational about it, and mm -hmm. that's why and, he's been successful. You know. And you're also really embarrassed to read a lot of the old stuff that you write. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Come like, on. I can't believe what, I used to. What are you embarrassed of? <laughs> Tell us, oh, please. Oh, read, read, read the stuff from like early. Two, I, I had one of the first posts I ever wrote, and I guess I'll admit it. Uh, you know, on this this show and let everybody know is 2012. I one of the first posts I wrote was why you should not invest in Facebook. Why it's <laughs> it's a losing proposition, mm -hmm. and I think the stock has gone like gone up five times since then. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. It, but it's documented. Well, you're right? not so doing you're not doing so bad if you if you thought Facebook was a bad idea back then because I mean a lot of us did. Yeah, so it's 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 good to have uh have these posts right like um, just go the, back the, and change the ticker to Twitter. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I, I did want to ask you before we we sign off. Um, because I don't think we've ever actually addressed this. What what do you guys uh, think about physical gold and silver? And particularly right now, like uh, as a buying opportunity. Oh, as I, a buying opportunity. And, uh, and what your stance is, like if, if you guys own any yourself or, you know, like you, you how go, somebody allocates it with mining stocks. Yeah. Okay, so I still own it. My entry point was obviously not the best in the world, but I haven't really bothered to touch it because... Um, I really do believe that at the end of the day, that's not where my wealth is going to come from. It, I treat it more like insurance. And the way that I've done that is I've just left whatever holdings I had uh, from buying it 2010 and 11. And so, yes, I still hold, uh, I haven't sold any gold or silver from when I bought it uh, in 2010 and 11. So I, you can guess I, I got in at the wrong uh, entry point. But because I now see it more as insurance and not as, you know, a wealth builder, so to speak, I'm just leaving it as it is and having it so that it's about 10% of my, you know, investable net worth. And so, you know, if it ever runs too much, then I'll probably pull some from the table. But the way that, that I see it, People coming in now, I would not, I mean, I mean, it depends on what the person wants at the end of the day, how old they are, how um, their appetite for risk uh, is, but really for me, because I'm still very young and I can afford to literally um, use all the money I have uh, many times over and still do fine. <laughs> Uh, because we have so long and because we're learning so much uh, in this industry and we, we know at the end of the day we're not going to lose everything. Uh, I'm just keeping gold and silver on the side as insurance. You know, if I do wake up one day and uh, the news across the board is, hey, so we've, you know, uh, there, there was like a meeting in Davos or something like that and the world leaders have all decided, uh, and the IMF has decided, etc., to uh, now have gold as a certain percentage of the SDRs, and that's going to be the the going currency for, you know, 200 countries in the world or something like obnoxiously crazy like that. Uh, and then gold runs, you know, automatically like to 10,000 or or something crazy like that. Then I know I still hold it. So. Really, it's it's for cataclysmic situations, and you know, at the end of the day, I'm just looking at the the gold stocks and and other resource stocks for actual gains. So, I I don't really look at it much, and uh, I care less and less because I've just diverted, um, you know, the money that I've been making now into just purchasing this this new vehicle. That's a very good answer. I, I, I think I'm glad you said insurance so many times because I didn't pinpoint that that's what gold and silver are. And I, I, I don't like to talk about it too much, but yes, I, I own, you know, physical gold and silver and I haven't, I've barely even thought about it. Like sometimes I forget that I bought it, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> but, but there's no, there's no 
for me, it's not a plan. It's not a plan to like trade out of it. Like I don't, I don't feel that way. And of course, some people do that with ETFs. Some people have a plan with their physical to do that. But what I, I strongly believe that people should probably own some type of gold and silver before they even look at any mining stocks. And that, that's my opinion. I, knew, I do know people out there who are really, you know, have been in the mining stock game for a long time and they're anything but a gold or silver bug. And they don't, they don't even want to own any of those precious metals. But I just think, I actually think that's really prudent. And, and beyond just insurance, I do think of it as cash as well. So like, you know, I, I'm not going to, I don't have that much dollar cash, but I definitely have, you know, more gold, silver cash than I have dollar cash right now, even though I don't, I don't think of it day to day as cash. But I do want to add one point that I think is especially important for, uh, you know, North Americans. I think that silver, you know, with all the crazy silver bugs out there, I mean, there's, it's really, it's like silver is like extreme, <laughs> so many different ways compared gold to gold. Gold bugs on steroids. I think it's an important consideration. And I think it's, you know, if, if you didn't have that much cash, I would actually recommend people, you know, buy a little bit of physical silver before physical gold. And you should, and, and you should have some, whatever, uh, the, you know, the Canadian maple or the, or, you know, the silver, uh, the silver eagles, like just, just that simple stuff. Because I think there's a good chance that's, that not only someday, um, you know, people are going to just start comparing them to hundred dollar bills, which, which, um, I, I was just browsing through the, the curse of cash book by Kenneth Rogoff and I got really angry with it, but like he had, yeah, we, we, I, won't, I won't go on a whole rant, but he has like no under, no inclination to even explain how that's possibly going to happen. But or, or even, you know, try to explain at all the importance of gold and silver, but whatever, that's, that's kind of like, you know, insider elites type stuff. But the point is that, especially in North America, out of anywhere in the world, you have all these silver bugs. You have a bunch of them in Canada and in the U.S., but Mexico, silver is so important to Mexico. So mm -hmm. at some point, even if you never actually do anything with your gold, I mean, you know, and this this is this goes to me beyond like legal or illegal, and I and I don't, yeah, that's why I don't want to go into too many details. I mean, I think people will absolutely barter your silver for for real stuff. So like, you're not you're not using it again. You're not using it to necessarily profit, but they will take your silver coins just like they will take you know twenty dollar bills or hundred dollar bills. And I and and that's not going to be the same in other parts of the world. But I know for sure that that is a good bet you know, for anybody to have a little bit of silver and, and, and you'll, you'll probably start to understand how gold and silver work more just by owning them. And then, and then it's a good time to like, you know, look at mining stocks. Uh, I, I do think it's a good idea to have that insurance at any time. It was probably better for people to be paying attention a few years ago, but there's nothing wrong with it right now. I mean, if you can buy silver at these prices, you're getting it way cheaper than I got my silver mm -hmm. for. So, you know, Me better to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, I was I, I was talking to Nick about this uh, when he came over to visit not too long ago. We were at the Mint and we were looking at all the different coins. And it turns out that the, some of the coins, uh, physical coins that I bought um, in the UK have held on to their value a lot better than the actual spot price. And I, I can't even explain why, because these are 2011 coins. So you would imagine... It was a year that was pretty hot that people were actually buying a lot of silver. And it just turns out that those coins actually have, uh, how can I put this, just lost way less value than the actual spot price. So hmm. I don't know. It, it, and I, the way that I've done it is I've bought some physical and I have some uh, allocated through uh, gold money. So there's some free advertising for them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that that that's that's cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's, I it, it's it shouldn't be treated as something that's going to be a quick trade. I mean, like I yeah, mm -hmm. I put the physical gold and silver. It's like a it's such a different category from the mining stocks. But ha having started with that stuff, it really it really helped me understand mining better. Like I so it's it's kind of like one part of the gateway to me. But it's um. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see that. I, I'll, I'll just add on that point, though. Uh, there are some people that are kind of scammy trying to get you to pay huge premiums oh, yeah. for 
for like, you know, older coins and to do that as your first buy, I think that's a total scam. Like I think, you know, buying, even, even buying a bar is like, uh, is better than, uh, you know, buying some old coin where you pay a 50 or hundred percent premium and unless, unless you really know what you're doing, but, but you, it's, it is, it is interesting to look at old coins. Cause I've, I've come across, uh, you know, some older coins and it's kind of cool to, to, you know, see something that came from the 19th century and, um, you know, has held its, it, it has, it might have some gold or silver, but it's, it's held its value and, and worth even a little more, you know, because of the age as well. So you, you can kind of go down that route. Cause there's definitely people that, you know, they trade those old coins the same way that people trade mining stocks today. <laughs> yeah. I think in that case, you really have to know what you're doing. It's almost yes. like you have to, you know, be a stamp collector and know which stamps yeah, are ex- the ones exactly. that are really worth the money. Cause you know, if you showed it to me, to me, stamps are stamps and they don't make any difference so as long as they're yeah. pretty, you know, like I like them, but it doesn't mean that they're worth anything more than, uh, you know, the actual historical important ones. So you have to know what you're doing before you buy in any numismatics and, and, you know, rare coins. You don't, most of the time you don't even know how rare they really are and where they're coming from. So buyer beware for sure.